we're on to the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Miles Bridges, who was arrested on felony domestic violence charges, was not part of my grade. Uh, I know for a fact. I didn't ask him about this, but he was definitely not part of Grant's grade. The only thing I will mention is go ahead and look at the – Katie Heindel's done some great stuff at the Basketball Feeling Substack on this. She wrote a great article, and she also went on the Locked On Hornets podcast and did an episode about the coverage of domestic violence in sports or also lack thereof. Um, that's just all I really have to say on the situation. And would I demerit them if they just sort of throw caution to the wind, if, uh, they're going to pay him anyway. And like those charges are still floating around out there or there's not enough discipline or uh, I will get into that when it comes, but miles bridges did not factor into either of our grades, uh, their moves though. They drafted Mark Williams at number 15. They traded number 13 Jalen Duran to the Knicks for Denver's 2023 first round pick, which is lotto protected through 2025, then turns into two seconds. They also got three second rounders from the Knicks, the Knicks is own in 23 Utah's 2023 pick. And then the least favorable of OKC, Dallas, Washington, and Miami second round pick. They acquired Bryce McGowan's the number 40 pick from the wolves for Josh Minot, the number 45 pick and the Knicks 2023 second rounder that they got as part of that Jalen Duran trade. They then signed McGowan's to a two way contract. Uh, they fired James Borrego. And after their dalliance with Kenny Atkinson, who backed out of a deal, they signed, a familiar face, Steve Clifford, to a three-year contract with a team option on that final season. They guaranteed Jalen McDaniels' salary, and they signed Cody Martin to a four-year, $31.6 million deal. The final season is non-guaranteed. He will never make more than $8.7 million, and the full scope of this deal would take him through his age 31 season if he finishes it out. Uh, their notable exits, uh, like I said, Miles Bridges, Isaiah Thomas and Montrez Harrell, they all remain unsigned. That's all I have right now. Grant, what was your grade for the, the Hornets offseason? So this is about as low as I, this is as low as I'm going to get to uh, on this division, at least. Uh, this is a D plus for me. Um, the, I, I guess I would frame it this way. Other than the Cody Martin deal, which I think we both agree is like, that's, that's a good deal. Um, I yeah, think we both, you know, the Martin, the Martins were kind of guys that it's, you know, kind of like auto Porter or whoever else, when we were going through free agency, it's like, you know, who would be a value signing either of these guys. And I think that's a fine signing. I think that's a, that's a good rate for a good player. That's not a star or anything close to it, but that's, that's fine to me. Everything else is either uninspiring or like downright, like depressing. And I'm focusing specifically on the Clifford hire. It's just like, like maybe, you know, Charlotte has needs someone, I think like Clifford to, you know, it's just this, old, it's an old school coach. He's going to focus on defense. He's going to be detail oriented. He's going to sort of, but I don't know how different that is from James Borrego and just the whole, the optics. I know the optics shouldn't matter, but it's what they signal here of just bringing back a coach that you've already had like recently, not 10 years ago. This isn't like Don Nelson coming back to the Warriors, you know, with a decade off or whatever it was. It's like, this guy was just here and he has since lost another job. Uh, in in the interim, so I I just am so it just I don't know how Charlotte fans feel. I imagine there's one you know there's a contingent that is cool with this and a contingent that feels like I do, uh, but that's just it just I just don't like it. I don't I don't feel like it's the sign of a team that is like serious about doing anything. And I would extend that to this is still a team that needs a center so badly and just didn't do anything. You know maybe Williams who they got at 15 is going to make a difference down the line, but like. I don't know. Don't we want to do something now? You're paying Gordon Hayward a bunch of money. Lamelo Ball is ready to be like a bigger star. Terry Rozier's and uh, talking about underrated players. I really like Terry Rozier. They have enough. Bridges kind of throws that all out of whack by taking that big piece out of the rotation. But you know, this is a team that I think should have been looking to kind of make some steps forward and just didn't do anything to to follow that path. And specifically. We're like we're just gonna play Mason. It's another Plumley season at center. This is what we're doing. We're gonna hope PJ Washington can play a little more. I just, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm super down on this. Nothing excites me about it. And Martin is about as about the best thing they did. And that's kind of like an on the margins move to me. I went with a C minus. Uh, I really like anyone who listens to this podcast knows Bryce McGowan's. I do wonder if like, are you that confident that Nick's second rounder is not going to end up in the 30s that you were willing to give it up to move up? five spots in the, the second round. I like the Cody Martin contract. I know some people thought it was an overpay. I don't understand that. And so I liked those. I don't have a problem with Mark Williams at 15. Uh, they do have sort of these hodgepodge of youngsters there, though. So there's Mason Plumley. You also have Kai Jones, 
JT Thor and now Mark Williams is part of this center carousel. So I don't know what the direction is there. That's definitely a knock against them for sure. Uh, but I don't have a problem with the Mark Williams pick specifically. This is also a team where it's like, okay, I understand that. Uh, well, I don't know if I should say I understand, but like, yeah, they're worried about staying far enough below the tax. And as of right now, this is not factoring in like uh, miles, what miles bridges might get. It's just a cap hold. They're $13 million away from the tax, but what sort of message does it send to Mel ball that you didn't, or anyone on the team, they just didn't use your, like even try to use your uh, mid-level exception this year. Uh, and that's something that presumably could have gotten you an upgrade at the big man spot. Uh, and it's fine that you guaranteed Mason Plumley salary. I get not paying him basically half of it to go away, but that just, that rubs me um, in, in the wrong vein too. So I, there are, and look, I actually don't have a problem with the Clifford hire. It's Kenny Atkinson chose to stay with the Warriors over going to like perennial mediocrity in Charlotte. I get it. And at least Steve Clifford cares about defense. I just don't think you've given him the tools to build right. a better defense. And what are you doing? Because right now you are in the sub middle still. Like you didn't, it's not even a matter of they didn't get better. They didn't pick a, like a concrete direction. So you're still sort of just existing in that eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 spot in the Eastern conference. And the East is going to be more. If you think the Knicks and the wizards are going to be better um, and that the Cavs are going to be right there, like the East is going to be maybe a little bit deeper or if not at least more difficult than last year. So I'm just very disenchanted with their off season. I felt like I couldn't go as low as a D because I really did like the Martin contract. And like I said, I'm a big fan of Bryce McGowan's and I, but the other thing, and am I going to talk myself in the same grade as you again? Just <laughs> why you're trading number 13 and you're getting back a first round pick. That's never, never has the potential to be as high as 13. Right. And it, I guess it's fine. If you think like, well, we're going to nail that next pick, but like those Denver picks, it's going to convey next year and it's going to be in the twenties. Right. That's like a weird thing to have the three second rounders is the only buffer there. I think I'm lowering mine to, to a D plus as I say this, because I didn't wait that trade enough. So I just, I'm very uninspired by what the Charlotte Hornets are doing. And like, this is a D plus where I'm not even like, I don't even think I'm penalizing them for what happened with Kenny Atkinson and pivoting to Steve Clifford. Yeah. Yeah, that did a lot. That, that did a lot of the work for me. But yeah, it's just you know, what are we? What are you trying to be? What What are the Hornets want to do? What, like, if you if you just were judging them on this off season, there would be no clarity at all on like what the what the plan is. What's the five year plan? What's the two year plan? What's the, What's the goal this year? There's just no reason to. There's There's no There's no signal of like what the what the plan is. And you always hate to see that. And I think a good harbinger of this is that this is not source, but like there were people who were erroneously proposing Charlotte as a Russell Westbrook landing spot, either because they wanted to get off of long-term money in Gordon Hayward and, or maybe Terry Rozier, but also just people that were like, Oh, it's Charlotte. And I think that that's lazy thinking, but it's also like, if that's how people are viewing the direction of the franchise, like that says a lot about their inability to clarify just what the fuck they're doing.